Hey YouTube, I just completed a project on my 2020 uh, Toyota TRD Pro Crew Max that um, I posted on one of my Tundra forums and there was a lot of interest for this project. So I thought I'd cover it here in a little video, show you uh, what we're dealing with. And then uh, there's a parts list below in the description. So feel free to write down the parts. All of them are accessible from Amazon. So I'll have links there and uh, you too can do this project. It took me a good day of work to kind of do it and do it right. So here we go. Um, I added both a 110 outlet into my Tundra TRD Pro. Um, keep in mind before you comment below, the Tundras do not have an in-bed outlet, the Tacomas do. A lot of people have said, well, why don't you use the one that came with it? Well, Tundras don't have them. So you can see here, I use the holes that are in the bed and I went ahead and mounted a 110 outlet right there. And then on this side over here, I've got a um, one of those portable uh, coolers uh, that run off DC and I added a 12 volt plug over here. Now that plug may not look familiar to you. It's since it's not a standard DC plug, but that's actually an aviator, two pin aviator plug. It's got a latch right here. I chose it because it will allow for a 30 amps continuous of current at 12 volts. So it's plenty for a fridge. It's also watertight. It had a cool little cap and hey, let's face it. It looks sexy in the bed. So from here, there's DC, there's AC, and then the wiring runs under the bed and down the frame of the truck. It's in wire looms and everything like that. It's hot. I'm not gonna climb under the truck and show you how it's wired. You can just take my word for it. But what I will do is go into the truck and show you how kind of make our way all the way into the truck. You'll notice that under my driver's seat is kind of where everything is homed. This is kind of the back view here, but I just wanna show this real quick here because you'll notice an inverter here. That is a 1200 watt inverter. Uh, and there's two AC plugs there. One of those AC plugs is the wiring is 10, uh, 10 gauge right from here. I'm going from here. And then I exit the truck using this drain plug that's underneath the carpet right here. So obviously you have to kind of, you know, pull out your mats and pull out the kick plate right there and you can you know, run that wiring. It's super easy. It's, you can't even tell it's there, but it goes down that drain plug and comes under the truck. And that's how I run um, that um, 10 gauge wire for the AC. The same for the DC as well. The DC, however, is wired to a little uh, fuse block. You can kind of see it right there. The uh, part number is in the description so you can get a better look at what it looks like. But what I did basically is I ran, um, I ran zero gauge, this fat zero gauge wires you can see right here. Actually, I'm not sure that that is it. That might be four gauge right there, it may be hidden, but I ran zero gauge um, back under the hood. So to kind of maximize my current, um, I believe based on the distance of the cable that I'm rated for 300 amps. However, um, I have a circuit breaker in line that limits it to 200 amps which should be plenty, right? That's a lot of DC current. Um, at any rate though, it runs to here to that fuse block. And then I've got um, a lot of two-way radios and all sorts of stuff that I use. Um, so I purposely um, chose to go over here. Yeah, you can see right here. Uh, here's the zero gauge. This is the ground wire. Um, I have that actually running under the carpet and under this panel right here. I used um, one of the bolts that's here and I made a nice solid ground, kind of cut away some of the paint. So I got a good ground right here. And then um, the AC side of this wire, is, eh, it's tucked in back here somewhere. You can't really see it, but at any rate, it runs under there. Got a little flashlight. Oh, usually I got that dressed up a little bit nicer. Silly me, oh well. Um, and then as we make our way up, so I mentioned that we've got AC and DC going this way, under and into the bed. Of course, the zero gauge is coming under the kick plate, back through here and through the firewall. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this took some love and some time. I don't think you can see it. I've really cleaned it up and it's not really visible, but I do have zero gauge uh, going through to under the firewall. And let's go ahead and pop the uh, hood real quick and I'll show you the final destination here. So as we pop the hood, you'll notice that my zero gauge, it's in a wire loom just to kind of keep from heat and dirt and dust, but it's coming through the firewall right there. And I've got it coming up. And then right here, I installed a 200 amp breaker. You can use fuses if you like. It's really a personal preference thing for you. I like breakers because it's just a really easy way to cut it off. You don't have to worry about fuses and it's so waterproof and everything like that. You'll notice under here, I did obviously all these connections myself. All of this is accessible on Amazon as far as this is, I believe, a 3 8 lug. 
and then you've got to have either a hydraulic crimper or uh, just a couple really cheap inexpensive options for uh, putting the lug ends on on stuff to create the battery terminals or to create the terminals for the battery and then you'll see i've got it kind of wired down here it's kind of dressed here um, i'm using a north star uh, and of course it's upside down i believe it's 930 cold cranking amps it's a deep cycle dual purpose and then you'll notice here i've got the final ac again this is zero gauge and this is what's going into the cab uh, to under the driver's seat a couple other things here i've got a an amp so i'm running that actually separate from the zero gauge and there you have it. The whole system is backfed as well by okay, a. Um, here's the app store. Okay, that's my watch kicking on. Um, the whole system is backfed by a um, solar charger. So I have a solar controller and a 220 watt uh, panel that backfeeds this system as well. And I've got a um, SAE connector under my driver's seat as well, where I can plug in my uh, controller, which I don't leave in full time because I don't want the drain, but uh, where I can plug in a controller if I'm overlanding, uh, plug in my panel. And uh, it feeds 220 watts, obviously in perfect sun, uh, and I believe eight to nine amps continuous back to the battery to keep things all topped off. It works great. I run my cooler off of it. I'll run a Traeger off the uh, 110 connector, 110 outlet in the bed of the truck. And uh, there you have it. So good luck to you. Hope this helps. And uh, take care. Again, parts list is in the description. Take care. Bye-bye.